Andrea Adelson of ESPN joining us. Andrea, I know the league today released its 990 forms in terms of the how much revenue they generated, things like that. You were down at the league meetings in Amelia Island in Florida earlier this week. When does the ACC collapse? Give us a date. <laughs> let us know when so people can plan for this. Um, your guess is as good as mine. I'll okay, that's fair. That. <laughs> that's fair point. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, the, the ACC did put out its revenue numbers today, $617 million, another record uh, for the league, which set a record last year as well, uh, oh, about $40 million per team, give or take a, a little bit of spare change in the couch cushions. But it's just not enough. I, I, it, it's sad that, you know, uh, uh, every year they set a, a, a record for the amount of revenue that they pull in, but the SEC also sets a record, and the Big Ten also sets a record. You, you were down there in Amelia Island. Can, can you get a sense of – the worry is not necessarily right now where they're eight to maybe 10 million behind these other schools, but two or three years down the line when these TV deals for the SEC and the Big Ten kick in, they may be 30 to $40 million behind. Yeah, and this is not a new story, as you guys know, right? I mean, being behind in revenue is something that the ACC has dealt with for years and years. The issue is that that gap is going to grow, and they've been able to be competitive across the board in all their sports despite the revenue gap as it exists right now the ACC continually leads conferences every year in total amount of championships won Mm -hmm. the wrong line is football right because football brings in the money and football is what gets you uh, entry into the university so to speak uh, when it comes to name recognition and all that extra good stuff and so the fear and concern is that a 30 to $40 million revenue gap compounded every year. It's not just 30 to $40 million for a year. Every single year, you're going to be behind by that much. So it's 30 million, 90 million, 120 million. That is going to make your football programs far less competitive. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then when that happens, that has an effect when you want to renegotiate your television contract or ask your television partners more money. It also has an effect on retaining your assistant coaches, your head coaches, uh, your players. We've already seen the ACC lose players to other programs that are offering uh, better booster collective NIL deals. Um, And then what if players become employees? Uh, How are you competitive in that space if you continue to be 30 to $40 million behind? So I understand the concern from the administrators across the league about what is this going to look like once this gap grows. I think they've done a really good job of mitigating it in a lot of ways, Um, but I'm not sure you can continue to mitigate it the way the ACC and its more relevant football programs have uh, when that gap doubles and triples in size. Yeah, when when you're East Carolina and you see the numbers of UNC and NC State, you're you're an you're an envy. Mm-hmm. But when you're Florida State and you look at the numbers of Florida, you say, "Wait a second, that, these are our rivals." If you're Clemson and you see South Carolina, you say, "How are we going to compete? That's the team that we have to beat year in and year out. How are we going to compete?" W- when they left the meetings this week, they seemed to be this uh, kumbaya moment, at least of of at least publicly, that hey, we're we'll stop bad mouthing each other here for a bit. Um, but behind the scenes. It seems like they know the first person that can get out of the ACC and get into the SEC or into the Big Ten is going to jump. Well, um, I'm sure that feels like a reality in the Pac-12 and probably the Big 12 as Mm -hmm. well, right? I mean, when you continue to look at where the money is, um, you would be silly not to study what your available options could potentially be. And I know there was a lot made this week about seven schools in particular. Just about every ACC school has had their lawyers in Greensboro take a look at the grant of rights, right? I mean, how could you not, considering the situation the league is in? They have a contract right now that runs through 2036. Not only do the SEC and Big Ten have an opportunity to renegotiate their gargantuan television deals before the ACC's is up in 2036, so does the Big 12. Mm-hmm. And that's another concern for a program like Florida State, uh, which does not want UCF to end up with more money than what they have. Um, So, you know, and I'm sure Miami feels the same way, right? So it's not just that you're tied together in this contract for the next 13 years. It's that other conferences 
are going to have the opportunity to renegotiate and get even more money on top of what they've already um, signed on to uh, while the ACC, you know, remains where it is. Now, I'm not saying it's always going to be like this for the ACC. There will be opportunities. There are look-in windows throughout the course of this contract with a television partner. And obviously, I work for ESPN, but I am not privy to any of those television discussions. I'm not in the room. There's a clear separation between those of us working at ESPN.com and our friends over on the television side. So I have no inside information here. Um, And I want to be clear on that. Um, But I do know that there are look in windows that are assigned periodically for the two sides to come to the table, take a look at the contract. Do we want to make changes? Is it worth adding some money? They had one when Jim Phillips became the commissioner. And so we've been writing about this story for the last two years. Um, And ESPN was good with where they are because their biggest football uh, brands in the ACC are not holding up their end of the bargain, right? So if those football brands start winning, Florida State looks like they're positioned to start winning. Miami's pouring a ton of money into their program with Mario Cristobal. If they start winning – and the ACC has two to three to four teams in the mix for a playoff berth and an expanded playoff, when the next look-in window comes around, potentially things could change. I'm not saying yes or no, but there are going to be opportunities to continue to sit down with ESPN and, and look at what this contract looks like. But I think the fear and the panic is if there's another wave of expansion, uh, that the biggest brands across the country mm-hmm. that are not already in the SEC and the Big Ten are going to be looking for a way to get in. Andrea Adelson, ESPN, joining us here on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline alongside Brian Murphy, Dennis Cox here with you. You bring up about conference expansion and realignment. Now, I know a lot of schools, for example, might want to go to the, to the conferences that have more money, but they also have to invite you in. It's a two-way street, right. and I don't, under, I don't think there are enough spots for every school in the ACC to land in another conference, at least not one the size of the Big Ten or the SEC. Uh, yeah, and that's also part of this whole, uh, you know, quote-unquote, seven schools, Magnificent mm-hmm. Seven, and a, a phrase, by the way, that these schools are not calling themselves. This is something <laughs> yeah. that showed up on social media and, and suddenly it became a thing, but that's what social media does, right? Now, the fact of the matter is, if, if those seven schools were trying to orchestrate something all on their own, A, there's nowhere for them to go right now. No. B, uh, they can't form their own conference by themselves because they're going to essentially forfeit everything that they have right now in the ACC and see, as you mentioned, um, where are the seven landing spots? Yeah. They're, they're, so, so a lot of what we saw this week was hyperventilation over impossibility, right? Seven schools cannot dissolve the ACC. Why would they do that? Yeah. One athletic director called us, called the idea completely absurd. Like th- th- there is nothing in it for them right now without an invitation to go somewhere else, okay? In addition to all of that, I would hazard a guess that the vast majority, 12 teams, you know, at the minimum, I, I, and probably all of them, okay, have gone to the league office to review the grant of rights. So yeah. The reason the grant of rights are in the league office is because the league doesn't want to send that in a email <laughs> or any sort of public document <laughs> that can be subject to a public records request at a public university, right? So if they email this out to UNC and I put in a request or Brian puts in a request or whomever puts in a request, they have to give it to you, Mm -hmm. okay? So the ACC doesn't want that. So none of us know what's actually in the contract. Let's be clear on that. Nobody knows what the contract actually says beyond the schools and the lawyers and the conference office, all right? So we don't know if it's even possible to, quote, dissolve the league if enough schools decide they want to do that. Beyond that, the amount of lawyers who have looked (laughs) at this document, okay? Countless, I'm sure. Okay. And have not taken it to court yet. What does that say to you about the viability of winning a case right now? So especially with 13 years left on a deal, and and, and grant rights for those who are not familiar with the term – 
uh, essentially ties all of your media rights to the conference. The conference owns all of your media rights Mm -hmm. for the length of that contract. Okay. So if you were to go to court and challenge that and spend millions of dollars in court trying to fight what's in that legal document and you lose, what is gained there? You, You can't get out. And, and now you've lost millions upon millions of dollars fighting in court, which is why nobody's gone to court. Right. Yeah. So, it, right. It, so there's a lot of realities that are easy to forget when you start um, hypothesizing about scenario A, B, C, D, E, and F, right? Because in the world of conference expansion for both media and fans, and even administrators, you love to play that what-if game. Oh, what if this? What if that? What if the other thing? What if the fifth thing? What if the sixth thing? A lot of those aren't even based on what the facts tell you. And right now, the grant of rights appears to be something that nobody wants to challenge in court because they don't know if there's a viable path to win. And the only way you're getting into another conference, if you get an in, and again, as you pointed out, if you get an invite, is if you get out of this legal document, which is tying all of the schools together. Right. So I, there, there are a lot of ifs and realities that don't match with a lot of the hysteria that surrounded the conversation this week in Amelia Island. Well, 